Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is Politico's uh, li Political Life's Future of Food and Farming Summit, for those who are only uh, tuning in right now. Uh, my name is Zosia Vanat. I am a reporter at uh, Politico, and today I will be uh, moderating and discussing with our panelists uh, the debate on the future of the European farming. Um, a new generation of farmers are here. Farms are evolving into different form forms, and with that comes a new set of challenges, but also opportunities. And this is what we are going to discuss today with my, um, with, with the panelists, with, with, with our guests, who are um, Julien uh, Fourdinier, co-founder and ch chief executive officer at Agricool. Hello. Uh, Diana Lancy, the President of the European Council of Young Farmers. Hello. Uh, Benoit Rabiou, uh, Chief Executive Officer at Bayer France, Cluster Head, Crop Science Northwest Europe. Hello. Hello. Uh, and Jan uh, Huitema, uh, the Member of the European Parliament, who is joining us um, and us online. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Very good, very, very good. Um, thank you so much for joining us, especially, you know, thank you, thank you so much for joining us in person. This is such a change, we've just, we've just discussed that. Uh, so the topic that we are going to discuss right now is almost like a philosophical one, you know, like it's what is the future of farming? What is the future of the European agriculture? It's super broad, very many, many angles that we can tackle. We have 45 minutes, I hope we'll make uh, the best uh, out of it. So maybe let's just start with like a very, very general question to uh, just to kick off to to start the conversation. If I could ask you about one one thing that comes like the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of the agriculture of the future, what is that? Maybe we can we can start with Julian. Well, uh, it's a very hard question. Um, <laughs> Sorry. First, I think you know um, it, it's very important not to oppose different approaches. So I think it will be like a complementary set of uh, you know techniques. Uh, it's very important because you know for me, for example, uh, I've uh, like invented a, a way of farming which is uh, like indoor farming. Mm -hmm. um, works on indoor farming, so we grow indoor in cities. So the question like people ask me when I present agriculture every time is like. Okay, will it replace agriculture? Uh, what are your par parents saying? Because my parents are farmers. Um, and do, like, do, are they scared about this? And you know, this is, uh, this is I'm, I'm concerned about this because for sure, uh, you know, we won't put the, the world into uh, indoor farming. It will be complementary set of, uh, of techniques. So yeah, I think first, um, the first question that comes to my mind, the first element that comes to my mind is that it will be there won't be a new, you know, like uh, innovation that will come and, and just mm -hmm. like replace farming. Mm -hmm. It will be uh, improvements everywhere. Okay, so like the the patchwork, like different systems exactly. working together. Yeah. Okay, uh, Diana, I'll go a bit more into the numbers. Uh, if I have to think of the future of farming, I wonder is there going to be a future of farming? Because if right now we have only 11% of farms in Europe are run by someone under the age of 40, we have a generational problem. We have a renewal that needs to happen. We need to bring new uh, strength, new energy in agriculture because all of the change that needs to happen will take time and it will need this new energy. It will need a new generation of farmers to come in. And right now we are with very tight numbers, scrunched at an 11%. I mean, I, I say to my association, we are a council where we have 33 uh, different association of young farmers from all over Europe. And I represent over 2 million farmers. But that is still a very limited number if we look at the potential and what needs to be done to take over the farms uh, that are slowly going into to retirement age and don't have succession plans. So that is my greatest concern. How do I make sure that we have enabling conditions for new farmers to come in and then proceed with, as he said, all the possible uh, practices, philosophies? I'm open to everything, but we need new blood. Okay, perfect. Uh, Benoit? 
So I think uh, we have two ways of looking the positive things or the negative one. If the negative is we look at Give me one of them, but if we look <laughs> at all the challenges, and which is not the option I would like, let's say, to go, is more the positive one and is innovation. And I think Guillaume starts, let's say, to address. I think there are a lot of innovation, mm -hmm. let's say, in, in, in farming. Innovation, product innovation, like we have been doing in the past on seeds, on biologicals. And you, Guillaume, you did mention one thing. It's probably the future is kind of moving to solution. And mm -hmm. where I'm a strong believer about the future, and that would be the future of farming, is to develop, is, you know, to put all these elements, crop protection products, seeds, biologicals, machinery, uh, agronomy advice, digital, we'll be talking about probably a lot of, let's say, digitization. And this kind of combination will really provide, let's say, customized solution in order for the, the young generation or the next generation, mm -hmm. let's say, to face all the challenges. Mm -hmm. So this is all these kind of the future solution mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, which are going, let's say, to, to be the future um, of our farming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jan? Well, your question was, what will the agriculture deliver in the future? I think agriculture will be more and more important because it has to deliver very essential elements for humankind. So, of course, it's about food, but it's much more than that. It's also uh, delivering maybe solutions for climate change, delivering on biodiversity, and delivering on the recreation. People would like to recreate in, 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 in our environment. But also to deliver, for example, in um, renewable energy or deliver in uh, resources for the chemical industry, for example. So more and more there will be a pressure on agriculture to deliver and that people will realize how important that is. And one element maybe to add what will the agriculture deliver, uh, also in respect to this panel, we will deliver data, very essential data. I think that is an element uh, that we uh, maybe can discuss also in this panel today. today. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's that's very interesting. And now you know, like you've all sort of uh, described a little bit. How do you think in I don't know in five, ten, fifteen years time what we are heading to, what the agriculture could look like? But to sort of to. Uh, to, to, to read that, to read that or to, to manage that in a way, we will probably need new tools, also regulatory and legislative tools. Um, and let's maybe focus a little bit on that right now. I would, to our audience, bo both inside and online, uh, I would like to draw your attention to our swap card platform. Um, you can ask questions there, so feel free to ask questions. We welcome all your questions. But also there is a poll uh, f uh, presented by Bayer, uh, which, which is exactly this. The, the poll says we don't have the policies and legislation in place to provide Ne next generation of farmers with the climate smart technologies and you can vote in the poll whether it's yes or no and we'll check that later to see what's what's your opinion ask the audience and now we can we can ask the panelists like do you think we have those like reg regulatory tools right now uh, do we have uh, or, or do we have to create them and maybe maybe I will start with Jan now because you are like a uh, policy maker, you know, like you, yeah. you, you actually yeah. work on this stuff. Yeah. Yes, we worked on this and um, well, we worked on this also in a recent cap, uh, for example, in the eco schemes uh, to make it more possible. But, um, and that is, it's a little bit technical, but that was the whole discussion. Do we want to have the conditionality so that we as policy makers are also inventing the measures that all the farmers in the European Union should implement? Or do you do, or, you st or do you steer more on the goals so that you more have an, yeah, an, an, a focus on the results, on a delivery model? And I prefer the last one. And to come back on what I said before, data is so important. I think if we know much more about uh, how things are going, how we can indeed improve uh, CO2 emissions or indeed, for example, store CO2 in our soils, if we know more how we can do it, then yeah, you can adjust the instruments to that as well. And um, I don't believe that we, uh, as policy makers, do know uh, how to do this exactly. It's more the experience from the field and experience from, from data. So that's why I hope that also in future we can have a common agriculture policy that is uh, steering and yeah, delivering and putting the money to those who are 
uh, delivering on results and not that you only get money if you implement measures that we in Brussels invent and decide on. Uh, th thank you. Um, Jean, Diane, maybe you, you know, like you represent farmers here. Um, uh, what, what do you think people like Jan or other policymakers on national European level could do so you could actually, you know, like you can, you can proceed into this agriculture of the future? Like, do you also, do you agree with Jan that the data is needed? Like, do you, do you feel there are other tools that they could start to think about or, or um, yeah, elaborate on? If, shall I go? Yeah, you can start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I second that approach uh -huh. because if we think that a policymaker in Brussels can take into consideration the whole array of production methods and, uh, and, and think of a solution that fits everyone and that can solve the problems and, and give us the, the magic recipe to create sustainability in agriculture in the next 50, it's impossible. We actually need farm-based information. We need to actually take the experience and the farm knowledge that is embedded in agriculture, find the knot, kind of like if it were almost like a chain and untie that knot. How do I release the potential of the specific farm situation? How do I find when we need innovation that comes from technology? When do I need innovation that comes from research? When do I need instead data that can actually give me a better way to make that farm perform? How do I make sure that we are acting on concrete cases? And that is why I think it is important to keep a very open dialogue with the farmers, especially with young farmers, because they have a vision. They are more innovative. They are more, more prone to change. And, um, but then they also need all of those possible solutions that they come up with to actually be something that they can bring on board their farms that they can make economically and financially sustainable. And because otherwise it will always be the, the dream toy that you just can't afford. And instead that's when the policymakers need to come in. We need to actually have measures that can help and support farmers and young farmers in the road that they are building to sustainability. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of measures do you mean? I mean, what kind of measures do you, do you advocate for? Probably many, but like when you think about <laughs> this, yeah. It would be uh, really yeah, nice yeah. that a young farmer who walks into a bank didn't have the probability of having 27% uh, of probability of having their request to finance rejected because we don't have collateral. So maybe we need to find a way to have uh, solid business plans that come from young farmers be backed by the European institutions through Euro European grants. Because if an if a older farmer has a 9% chance and a young farmer has a 27% chance, and especially in the first years of a startup or in when a farmer takes over a farm, the costs and the investments to implement a, a change, the change that is being requested, I, I need the financial tools. I also need the financial knowledge. That is another thing I advocate a lot for, helping farmers actually have that capacity to, to create a business plan, to have that, that vision, that financial vision of their farms, because yes, they are providing food, yes, they are providing an environmental service, but at the end of the day, they also need to, to profit. I need to make my family survive on my farm, mm -hmm. which is getting harder and harder and harder. And Julia? What is, yeah, what is uh, your experience? Well, I'm, I'm not uh, as expert, you know, on the um, regulatory system for like uh, uh, farmers, um, but um, I think something interesting today for me, for example, is that I'm not even a farmer. Uh, you know, like uh, with this company we've created, that so I'm, I'm uh, growing herbs, greens, and strawberries in in Paris inside shipping containers, but on a regulatory basis, I'm not a farmer. And I don't even know <laughs> where I am. Um, and so what I want to say is that um, it's very hard for the policymakers because you have to be open-minded to what will come in the future um, so that you know, the new ways of farming that can be interesting and can be sustainable and can, that can bring fresher food and better food for the future, um, I don't know, can be taken into account in this you know, uh, regu regulatory system and, 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 and policies and, and incentives. So it's, it's, very, it's very odd, uh, but it's very important to be like, uh, open-minded and, and maybe yeah, look at what is concretely happening uh, on the field to bring the, the products and, and, and try to incentive what, what's the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, and what from 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 the corporate perspective, like what would you expect from 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 the politicians? Like which tools do you need? Do you think are needed? So on, on regulation, uh, first, what I believe is in in Europe we are we are was one of the most regulated region. Mm -hmm. Let's say if we compare, let's say, with our other countries and region, which is by the way also creating some other distortion and issue on, on the trade side. And you know, uh, I spent before I joined, uh, let's say, the crop science, I spent 18 years in the pharma business, which mm -hmm. is a highly regulated, and I was very much surprised to see that the crop science business is also highly regulated. Most of the product need to have, let's say, marketing authorization. Um, so, um, what I'm expecting in the future, you know, we have been talking about, let's say, new innovation. I think this was mentioned also early in the introduction with new breeding technology. What regulators need to be open, let's say, to mm -hmm. this new innovation to really assess and be open in the assessment, evaluate the risk and the benefits, and, to pro and, and give the possibility to provide this new innovation, let's say, to farmers. And um, let's another idea, and I think this, this was also mentioned regarding data. What I believe is the future, it will be not only product, but probably solution. And solution could be the combination of product plus, plus data plus digital. So which means that regulatory authorities needs to change their view on the way they are assessing. For the moment, it's only an assessment of, let's say, products. And if you combine product with digital solution, that could change uh, the approach. I will only give one example. You know, with, uh, let's say, on uh, use, uh, using of herbicides, uh, let's say, in countries. And what we see is on soil, drain soil, the more and more, let's say, we'll be banning herbicide, let's say, of application. Uh, reality, you know, if we are not able to provide solution to pharma, we are going to ban, ban product without providing any solution, let's say, to pharma. So farmers will have, let's say, to stop producing on this soil. There is a possibility through digital tools, you know, let's say, to develop some application in order, let's say, to help the farmers to apply that uh, buyer. We are working on that dimension with Arvalis, which is a French technical um, uh, association, to really help, let's say, the, the farmers, let's say, to apply the product let's say the right piece. But this needs to be approved by regulators. So regulation will have, let's say, to change their way of assessing the product in order to, to help, let's say, farmers and provide, let's say, this solution. So this is what I, I would also expect, let's say, from uh, regulation in the future in order to, let's say, to bring all this innovation on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, Jan, having sort of heard all of that, uh, like, do, you, do you think there is space like in the European policymaking to sort of accommodate such such um, wishes, demands? So I think um, at nowadays, uh, in our uh, parliament, it's like schizophrenic a little bit. So people really would like to uh, reach the targets in the Green Deal. And then automatic reaction is more legislation and stricter regulation. On the other hand, if you do this, then you do not unlock the potential of new innovations. And also in the Green Deal, it's mentioned that we really need new innovations a new tool, new instruments to reach those targets. So we have to be very careful uh, with that. And indeed, those instruments are mentioned already. Indeed, I think uh, new genome techniques are an important one. Uh, precision farming, um, digitalization, um, but also indeed, uh, like I said, to have a, a mind shift as well, that we should much more look at a farm level, what, is, what are the best choices to make indeed to, for example, preserve biodiversity, to do something on climate change, uh, and still um, also have a good production, uh, have, have a productive uh, way of producing uh, uh, food in an efficient, uh, efficient way. So, um, yeah, I hope really that we can um, get out of this, um, how is it, catch-22, and look much more indeed to the practice, what is happening there, and uh, yeah, listen and look and measure and uh, see what is necessary there to come forward and to reach the targets that we all would like to see in the Green Deal. I would like to just follow up on one thing that you said before about data. Um, as, oh, who do you, like you, you were saying that there are not enough data to sort of target the policies properly, right? Uh, who, who do you think should be responsible for coll collecting this data? Should like how, how this should work so, in practice? Both ways. I think indeed the government should be uh, responsible to have the uh, good framework and also in the new cap 
we have a whole list in the annex of, of new indicators uh, and also some uh, tools and some some how you say some guidelines how to measure it. Uh, but then you need, of course, the instruments to do so. And then I look much more in the need to, to precision agriculture and digitalization. And that has to come from the, from the sector. And yeah, it's um, interesting to, to see it's not always that, that, that easy how we can facilitate this, how we can stimulate this. And I think indeed also public money could be spent, for example, in Horizon 2020 or maybe even in the Corona Recovery Fund, things like this. Uh, we should, uh, should have a look to that. And another aspect is that maybe uh, policymakers could uh, have an influence in is standardization. So at the moment, it's quite difficult still that different brands of equipment are, can, can speak to each other and that you can indeed combine data or can analyze data. And um, that is, of course, uh, very necessary uh, to make the right uh, analysis and also the right decisions. Mm -hmm. um, in the in the subject line of our of our today's discussion, we are talking like a, about future of farming, new techniques, new challenges, but also a new generation. And this is a question I I've already asked you, but I would like to ask you again. I mean, what is the new generation of farmers? Because we I, I think we should sort of you 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 you. We're, we're speaking a little bit about this, but if you if you were to compare the old generation of farmers, what is that, and the new generation of farmers? You know, like what are the differences? What are the the similarities? Who should we address all these things to? So um, we're the generation who was brought up constantly hearing the message: you will have to be doing more with less. So. When they tell us that they're going to cut the cap budget, we're actually not even scared. We've been so used to hearing that there is less money, less opportunity, less uh, less coming from us like on a direct basis that we've become more creative, more smart, more uh, ambitious. Um, it's a generation of farmers who's really either taken up family farms but also fought to create uh, to diversify, to add uh, multifunctionality to their farms, to diversify process, product, value. Uh, we're a generation that has uh, considered the added value that comes, for example, from quality products and has managed to learn how to communicate it. Um, it's not a generation of farmers that is just linked to let's say, to the working of, of the land. It's, it's a much broader, you've become, you've become kind of, you wear a hundred hats in a, in a day. I know I wear a hundred hats in a day. Um, but on the other side, we're also a generation that does have to deal with, uh, most, uh, most farms come from succession, so you have problems of maybe having to buy out siblings um, or wanting to expand your farm, and so you have problems of access to land. I mean, we have the traditional roadblocks, but in a way, because we were brought up with I this idea that truly nothing for our generation is a given, we have to be, we have to beat the system in a way with our own, uh, with our own uh, tools. So I must say that in our council, the conversations that we have when we manage to bring in experiences from all over Europe really create that that energy, a very positive vibe, a very positive energy of some of people who want to build. And they also want to build the, the policies that will enable the even newer generation to come in. So a generation that can already tap into technology, precision farming, uh, use uh, a technology that could have not even been imagined 30 years ago, a tractor that drives itself. Of course, then we have the problem of we we really need to cover the broad the problem of broadband in rural areas because I have a friend who says he needs to always make sure he turns off his tractor right before it goes to the boundary of his thing, otherwise it's going to go down the cliff because it can't read that the boundary is actually there and not uh, three meters before. That's so we have some like glitches still problem. with technology yeah. and, and implementation in agriculture, apart from the financial <laughs> side. But it is a more ambitious uh, generation. And it's also a generation who's grown on the farm or seeing, seeing climate change, seeing how uh, climatic catastrophes are more common, how the weather patterns are changing, how we are really not in in an agricultural system of 30 years ago. 
And so we know that there is something that, in a way, we have to fight, that we have to find a solution to, and that is also where we're becoming very innovative. There are so many centers of research for agriculture, there are so many uh, excellences even in the private sector that give us a lot of, uh, of potential tools that we can then bring back to our farms. I mean, uh, no tilling up until 10 years ago was something nobody talked about, but there are a lot of farms that now do no tilling because it does have uh, an impact on the soil. And it's hard maybe to convince your parents. I mean, I went from more conventional farming to organic farming. My parents really trusted me in, the, in this change. It was not a, a, a painless one, of course, especially in the first years. But it is a way to, in a way, change the process, know that you're being part of that change, of that solution, of the problem you're living every day on your life. Because if I don't start mitigating climate change, the possibility of my harvest year to year being destroyed by hail bombs that are the size of almost a baseball is going to just grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Rio, like, I mean, you also said that your pa uh, parents are farmers. Like, if you compare what you, like you said, that you don't, don't even know if you are a farmer or not, as uh, uh, at least when it comes to the regulation. Like, when you compare the two systems, like, what do you maybe if you look at your colleagues, like, are they also from like the f like new farming sector or? Or are are there are the, are they more like an engineers? Like how would you how would you see this change? How would you see this like distinction division between those those, those like two generations? If if we can call it like like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I you know I think the new generation of farmers is just the new generation. Uh, so <laughs> when we talk about the new generation, we talk about uh, people that want to have a, a purpose in their job. You know, a mission. They want to. Uh, do something for the future, and they, 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 you know, we like can't just wake up and go to work. And I think this is exactly the same thing for for all farmers we were talking about. Um, so they want to bring better, you know, and healthier and, and and fresher food for for everyone. And this is a beautiful mission. So it, they just want to to work on this, and this is what we see also at at Agricool for sure. You know, all the 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 employees mm -hmm. that come to work at Agricool want to come because they want more sustainable food system. They want to fresher food for the city and they want more local. Um, and yeah, I think this is uh, something interesting because what we see with that new generation of farmers, that they, they, uh, there are more and more uh, um, new farmers that will just switch the strategy of the, of the farms of their, their parents, or at, at least adapt it a lot, mm -hmm. uh, so that you can meet the local expectations. So for example, you see um, a lot of farmers around Paris um, that were you know, growing wheat, uh, uh, conventionally, and that will progressively start to uh, grow fruits and vegetables and, and sell it in, in Paris and, you know, like adapt to local uh, needs, for example. Um, so you see that, you know, uh, generation of farmers thinking about the, the purpose. It's not, you know, like uh, uh, radical change, because I think this is not possible for them in terms of just like, money uh, to just like switch the farm and okay I will I will stop uh, growing wheat and and instead growing only like uh, local food for 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 around me I think this is progressive but it's very interesting and it's not uh, always about uh, you know technology mm -hmm. uh, for example you can you can switch a farm uh, to more local uh, you know distribution uh, adapting what you are produ you know producing to the local needs, uh, and this is a you know, huge innovation. You just uh, bring local resilience to, 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 to around you, local food, fresher food, healthier food, uh, and sometimes there is not enough, you know, more technology than before. Um, so it's, 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 it can be a, like, um, you know, innovation for, for, for the purpose. I, I, I yeah, think actually yeah. a new generation of farmers, they will be like mini CEO which means that they will run their farm as a small, let's say, company, because it's getting much more, let's say, complex. You need to have a kind of purpose. You need, let's say, to achieve all the transformation, to go in mm -hmm. a more, let's say, sustainable, let's say, f uh, farming. Mm -hmm. You need to do more with less. That's reality. That this is kind of, let's say, re reality. And that would be also a kind of change of mindset. I, I believe that probably uh, the new generation, they would outsource let's say, more of the activities, you know, having uh, their own tractors, the biggest one, their own machinery, 
it's over, you know, and doing things, let's say, in common, that could be the, the future. I also believe young generation, I mean, the private, uh, the life balance uh, is also going to be important. So working seven days, let's say, per week, 365 days, uh, it's difficult. So I, I think it would be completely a, a change, and I believe that farm, now, let's say, doing farming, it's like uh, running, a, let's say, a small company. And it's a, a different profile, and that's probably the reason why you do not believe are you a farmer or a CEO, mm -hmm. and you are both. But maybe just to add something is that um, I think one of the the, the biggest uh, threats is the uh, uh, the discussion with the parents. Uh, to be honest. <laughs> like uh, you know, like we were talking about my parents, they are very nice with me, so that's okay. But you know, I f I feel uh, it's very hard for you know someone uh, taking over the farm to say to his parents, you know, while still working with him, because for like five to 10 years, you are working with your parents, you know, what's, what you are doing was not so great for this. And I think consumers want something different. Yeah, there is, uh, what there is a lot say? to do. What do they say? What do they reply? Well, you know, like the, it's, it's um, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's very hard. I feel more between my father and my, uh, my brother, which mm -hmm. is uh, taking over the farm. Um, because for me, you know, it's uh, kind of very different. So they are like, okay, it's, it's not, it's different. You know, <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. farming. Mm -hmm. um, but when you want to switch your own, like the farm that your parents were was working on to, for example, organic or for local food, um, yeah, it's very hard. For, so most of the time, the, the, the parents will say, yeah, but you know, it won't be profitable or yes, but you know. Mm -hmm. and, and you need, you know, this kind of uncertainty to, to start and, and you need trust from your parents to start something. So mm -hmm. this is, and this is not, you know, policy makers, <laughs> this is, it's very difficult. Uh, but maybe talking about it um, with transparency can help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very interesting. I, I actually um, have a couple of questions here. Thank you so much for sending those, and I encourage you to, to ask questions. Uh, and this is the one to, um, I think, to Diane and Riom as well. Uh, given entering into farming for the next generation is very difficult for many reasons, how can community ownership and collective management be leveraged to overcome these difficulties? Do you have thoughts on this? <laughs> it's <laughs> probably <laughs> it's again a, a quite technical it's it's part of the solution i mean we really need to find po coherent policies that not only allow let's say first installment but first management it's not just about a, a, a lump sum that the cap can give you or th the, these spot measures that don't actually solve the roadblocks they just postpone the big crash. So there are a lot of innovative ways to look at land ownership. There are a lot of innovative ways to look also at agricultural, uh, innovative ways of uh, finance in agriculture. I mean, I see so many new prototypes of, of businesses coming up, such as uh, um, AgriCool, correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and that's the future. It's giving a lot of room that, uh, and possibility to these no new and innovative uh, projects. It's, it's a lot about then having a regulatory system that protects that. I have a very interesting case in Italy of a, a startup on, um, they, they basically breed insects for then pet food. And because they are a startup, they are because they are an agribusiness. They can't have the regulatory protection and finance protection of a startup. And so instead, because of the type of plant they have, they are much closer instead to a business than an agribusiness. And we, like for example, we don't have the concept of an agri startup. That would be a great thing to think about because it could open a new space in the market for that type of, of innovation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's a lot about land ownership. You were uh, yeah, talking about this. So, in in and there can, there can be a lot of innovations to 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 work on this. Uh, I've also some other examples. For example, a startup that um, is multiplying hundreds of micro farms uh, around cities, and they don't own farms, but they go to mm -hmm. uh, meet with you know like farmers and say, okay, can I lend you um, maybe five hectares? 
uh, and we have a you know, framework that makes a farm profitable and, and they apply it and they hire people on this and it's then you know, like selling the, 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 the food the, around, the, around the farm. Um, so you, know, you can be innovative and find new ways um, to, to farm without you know, having mm -hmm. the farm from your family. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and this is very nice because we've, yeah, this new generation is uh, you know, well connected. Uh, so the, they, they are very much more aware of what is, you know, what's the innovation uh, that is starting I don't know, in the US or in Asia or in, you know, if you were in Europe and, and you can bring it uh, instantly uh, in your country. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it will help. Uh, we, we have m one more question here for, for Jan and also for Dejan. Uh, which incentives can you think of to boost the uptake of precision and digital farming tools in Europe? Uh, if anyone else would like to comment on that, that would be very interesting too. But Jan, maybe you could start. So, so um, what do you would like to achieve with precision farming? Yeah, with precision farming, it's indeed what we're talking about to produce more efficient in a way so with less uh, um, losses with maybe less input um, also you could think about indeed that you could tackle an incoming in, in disease or a plague or an infection in in, in the crop field right at uh, at the start so that is that these are the advantages of precision uh, agriculture so it's also about maybe a cost price but also delivering uh, very much on environmental aspects maybe climate biodiversity and things like this. So I would say that the common agricultural policy would be a very important element there. And that's why I'm advocating again so much on a results oriented approach that you are uh, rewarding the, the, the efforts and, and uh, the results uh, on your farm. And then a farmer will think himself, okay, how can I reach those um, goals and how can I deliver on those environmental aspects, for example, in the best way? And then they will choose for precision agriculture. Um, one element that is, I think, important as well to, to discuss, and it's a tricky one, at the moment only the money is going to, to the farmer themselves. But I think in future also contractors will have to play, or maybe auditor companies will play an important role. How do you make sure that they are stimulated as well to invest in the right equipment? And that's a, that's a tricky question. Mm -hmm. There, I agree on this, this last point because, uh, as we said, farming is, is changing. Maybe it's not so much the the farm manager that that's in the field and often actually a lot of, of field work is leased out to contractors and incentivizing the uptake of this type of technology could also be be beneficial for them the other thing is incentivizing co-ownership uh, if i own 16 actors and my neighbor owns 16 actors neither of us can actually afford that type of technology or can have the, the return on that investment that is necessary to, to uptake it. Instead, with co-ownership, which is, for example, some things that we're studying in our territory, um, this could be facilitated. But co-ownership, for example, requires that you create companies that are um, in a net, and that is bureaucracy, that, those are costs. So, we also need a, a bureaucracy and an, an administration that can facilitate and, and make the mechanism a little less uh, complex for the single farmer to actually uptake, because bureaucracy is time and time is money, and so we always have to factor also that in. Mm -hmm. uh, Benoit, yeah. Do you, yeah. I'm not sure, sure that actually we need incentives in order, let's say, to develop that, because I can tell you digital farming of precision is going to be developed to, to develop very fast. You know, mm -hmm. if we look at all the value behind that, like in, as it was mentioned, reducing in input, let's say, to make a more mm -hmm. sustainable farming, advising farmers so that they can make uh, the, right, uh, the, the, the right decision. So this is going, let's say, to develop very fast. Group like Bayer, we are investing a lot of money, but there are a lot of startups Mm -hmm. which are in the agri-tech, which, which are developing things. I think the French government announced a, a 200 million investment in agri-tech and so on. So the whole ecosystem mm -hmm. is developing, let's say, pretty fast in order, let's say, to, to, to boost this kind of, let's say, technology. So I'm not afraid about this kind of de development. Digital will accelerate the transformation. 
We only need, let's say, to be sure that when, when we have innovation, we can bring that on the market. But do we need incentive, to incentive, more incentive to do that? I'm not so sure. It's going, let's say, to come from the startup. The good thing is the startup are going to be to push the big group like Bayer, you know, and then, let's say, to change also their philosophy. So the, the ecosystem is a positive one. I'm pretty confident and positive on that dimension. Mm -hmm. Um, I, would, I would have one, probably one of the last questions um, about, the, the, this is something that you briefly mentioned, um, about farmers of the future being a little, more of businessmen really, you know, like people who actually think of their farm not only as a farm but also as a business that they would like to expand, that they would like to sort of manage as, as, as a small company. Um, and I would like to um, refer to Diane again because, yeah, I think you mentioned that um, that uh, you sort of support the new education for farmers. So you want farmers to sort of get the tools to run their farms in in a way. It's a business. It's a business model. Do, do you think this is going to go in that direction? Is it? Do you already see that that the farmers are 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 learning not only you know how to manage the soil but also how to manage the company i think this is uh, this is the big uh, challenge we have in the future of creating this this new generation of really smart uh, and open-minded farmers uh, without ever losing the fact that the beauty of being a farmer is that you have also like really deep roots in your in your ground so it's it's a combination of the two. We will never become the manager who runs his farm from the yacht. We will always have that connection to our land and to our soil because you also need that that really manual feel with with uh, with, with with your land. At the same time, you need so many more competences, and you also need to to really uh, have that capacity to analyze and be very analytical in understanding your farm needs. May it be on the agronomic side, may it be on the market side, how do I create more added value to my product? Where can I diversify my, my market? Do I need to go local? Should instead I be looking at export? So if I'm going to export, what are the... We really need to create competences. Uh, skills, a, a really broad toolkit for the new generation of farmers, where actually the new technologies, precision farming is basically, it should be taught like if it were already the ABC uh, for the new farmers. And that's why I hope that, for example, the CAP will also support technical programs in technical institutes where farm owners and farm workers are taught the use of this technology, how to read data, how to uh, work data, how to then make it be something that can be uh, compliable to, to the farm method, useful for the farm method, because that's what it is. We need projects that then create value that are, that are sound. It's not just about deciding if, if it doesn't make sense on, on my farm system, it, it shouldn't be the correct solution. You need to find, as I said in the beginning, the, the knot that needs to be untied to unleash the whole uh, potential of the farm. So. This is one of the things we advocate a lot in, uh, in Seja, is, is creating patterns of, of uptake of knowledge. May it be in schools, may it be from peer-to-peer -peer exchange, may it be from international exchanges that can really broaden the, the capacities and the knowledge of, of the farmers. Because we will have to be a hundred million different things from here to, to the future. Would you, would you agree with that, Moira? This is something that... Yeah, I, I, I think the, 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 the scope is very large, which is kind of one of the difficulties. But mm -hmm. maybe one la last point is digital farming is going to be a very good way to attract young generation. And that's, a, that's going to make it, let's say, our sector m much more attractive, let's say, to young generation. So that's all. Mm -hmm. I, I would end up, let's say, under this positive dimension. So maybe we'll just finish up with your personal experience. How did you do that? You <laughs> sort of combined the two, how to, uh, uh, the business yeah. model, the well, agri model. Yeah, I think the, the, the like agriculture is uh, very attractive for uh, new generation because you know there there is something, and after the COVID crisis, even more. You know, like we want to be connecting to connecting to products, and a lot of uh, uh, employees enter at agriculture and say, "Yeah, I want to." You know, be connected to, to the products and want better products. So, uh, so I think uh, today, um, uh, like, there will be more and more educated farmers that will come to farming that was that were even not farmers at all before. 
Um, and, and I think this will bring uh, a lot of value to the uh, old uh, ecosystem uh, in, the, in, you know, in the countryside with the other farmers. Because the, yeah, for sure you need uh, education, uh, more education for, for farmers, but you also need more connections between the farmers. And when you have one, for example, that, I don't know, creates some bread with uh, local wheat, it can, you know, uh, buy wheat for, to the other farmers that were not aware of that pot potential. Uh, and then, you know, like everyone win because uh, they can, you know, make more money out of their wheat, for example. So um, I think, you know, this new generation wanting to, to go to, to, to farming will uh, bring uh, a lot of value uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to the ecosystem. Perfect. Perfect. With that note, positive note, <laughs> uh, we will have to wrap up this panel. Thank you so, so much for all our guests. I think this has been super interesting, um, at least at least for me. Uh, now, I think we would like to invite you for a short networking session and, and coffee. You will hear the announcement when, uh, when uh, we are back here with my colleague Gabriela Galindo uh, for a conversation on gene-edited foods in Europe. So stay Stay tuned, stay with us, and have some coffee. Uh, thank you so much.